Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, welcome, everybody. I uh, hope you've been having a great build this far. Uh, my name is Niels Lauta, and I'm joined today by... I'm Mike. He's Mike. Uh, and we work in the Windows Developer Platform team. So that means our team is responsible for things like Windows Terminal and WCL and Power Toys and all the good stuff. Um, and today we're actually going to talk about Windows Command Pal. So Windows Command Pal is something that we shipped uh, last month as part of Power Toys. Um, and if you're familiar with Power Toys Run, this is really the next generation of it. So we built it from scratch with WinUI. It's blazing fast and it really helps you to find files or launch apps and do a lot of other things because we actually have a great accessibility model, right? That's right. So maybe instead of uh, just talking about it, we can actually uh, show what it can do. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so, you know, this is the Windows Command palette, which is not showing up on the screen. Oh. Let's exit the PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. That's it. That's what it is. There we go. There we are. This is the Windows Command <laughs> palette. And as you can see, you know, it's pretty much your basic launcher. You know, you can find the apps you're looking for, whatever. You can do calculations, look for files. But the real power of the command palette comes from its extensibility, right? Any app can plug in to the Windows command palette and add their own commands and their own little snippets of functionality straight to it that give all the power of your app right at the user's fingertips. So like as an example, here is this GitHub extension that we have, right? And I can pull up, this is a list of all of my issues for the command palette on Power Toys, but I can just like very quickly search through this and like look for, you know, an issue that I'm looking for, and I can pull up all sorts of commands that are related to it. You know, if I just want to like quickly copy the link to something, I can do that. Or you know, if I wanted to browse the actual issues on GitHub straight from the command palette, I can do that, and I can quickly triage stuff. Uh, and that's because you know there's this extension for GitHub uh, right here in the command palette. So you have a lot of things to do still, it seems. I, you have I have a lot, a lot of, of stuff. open issues. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of stuff. Whatever, it's fine. We're working on it. Right. So how can we um, basically build our own extension? How does that work? I think, uh, you know, I think it'd be cool if we just built one right here on stage live, you know, and we can... We have 12 minutes left. We, we can do it in 12 yeah, minutes. Okay, okay, that's cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create an extension right from the command palette itself. So if we uh, just run this create new extension command, you can see command palette comes with everything you need to get started building extensions for it. So I'm just going to call this build demo my build. So I don't, don't need to re uh, clone a repo or do anything else. You can just create your own solution right from command palette itself. So getting started is, as Mike is showing, really, yeah. really, really easy. It's this easy. All right, so we can open this solution up. Uh, and I'm just going to start building this in the background. Uh, but let's, let's take a quick tour through what we made here. This is kind of the template project that's made when you first create your extension. And if you come in here, you know, we have our command provider. This is the part where uh, command pod kind of calls into your extension and asks for a list of commands, right? Right now we just have, we have one command, this demo page. So this is the command that shows up on the, on the first, on the top level, right? That's right. And then we come in, uh, oh, not that one. We come into our pages and we have our build demo page, which is loading. And here, this is, you know, the actual commands that the user will see when they open up our extension. So if I come in here and I open up the command palette, I can go here to our uh, extension. And once it loads. So that's the flow. So you basically deploy it and you just reload in command palette and that's the way how you can. Look, there you go. Find it's it. the extension, right? Nice. That's cool. You do. It took us one minute. Yeah. But thank you all for attending. No, no, joke. So what, what else can we do? <laughs> we should make our extension do something. Yeah, right? that's a fair point. Uh, let's just start with something simple. Let's just like add a link to the Power Toys repo. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to drag and drop this because no one wants to watch me type. Uh, and so what we're doing here is we're just adding a new list item. And that list item has a command. And the command is open this URL. We're just giving it a little title. I'm just going to build that. So this will be the default command as well, right? So if I type in and just hit enter, it will just launch this URL. Uh, yes, yeah. So we're just going to open this up, and we're going to come back, and we're going to reload it. We're going to come back, and it's yeah. going to boot into it. We're going to come here. Look, there's open Power, Power Toys. Toys. 
Okay. That works. Look, it does something now. Nice. That was another 30 seconds, so that's good. Okay. But it could probably do more than that. Right, right, right. What like, we... usually you want to have your apps do more than one thing. So let's add another command. Let's uh, come back here. Let's uh, add a command. I don't know. Let's have it open up command prompt. Right. All right. Something pretty simple. But, you know, you can do more than just opening up URLs, right? This is kind of showing off that I have code here for launching arbitrary processes, you know, or just running whatever code you want from your app. You can do this. And it already comes up with a bunch of like built-in commands, right? So I don't need to worry about handling processes. That anonymous command will just do that for me. Yeah, we have a toolkit with all sorts of helpers in it just to make your life a lot easier. Like for instance, right. we have these icon info helpers mm -hmm. for finding new icons for right. your uh, extension, right? Just to give it, like this isn't very helpful to me, right. right? Be cool if that was like the icon for GitHub. So if I reload this, so you can pull icons from uh, the actual XE, right, of the applications or from the web, or you can list your own or... Yeah, that's right. So here nice. we have, you know, Power Toys or Open Command Prompt. Oh, that. Great. Mm. Cool. That was nice. another 30 seconds. Oh, there we go. Eight okay, minutes wow. left. So what else? Okay, eight minutes. Um, I don't know. Maybe... Nope. Like I saw the, uh, we can probably do something with the side pane, right? I saw some of your, of the plugin that you showed, right, this panel. So there's a bunch of stuff shown here. Um, I see it's the same list, but how can we enable this, this side panel? That's a good idea. Uh, you can add details mm -hmm. to the items too, right? If you want to add more context, you know, just like give the users more information. Uh, I just happen to have this, uh, this right here, which is the uh, entire contents of the Power Toys readme. Oh. Wow. That's just, you know, markdown. So I'm just going to drop that in there and I'm going to, uh, I put that in the wrong place. Needs to go here. And then I'm going to make this details object. Mm -hmm. Let's put that up here. Okay. So this is a details. It's got details in it. The details are the contents of this readme. It's just markdown. You don't need to worry about how to render it. And then I'm just going to stick that over here on this list item. I'm going to say the details are my new GitHub details. Great. And I got to go say that I want details visible. OK, so with this, we basically let the command know, like, oh, you need to render this in a different hey, way. Yeah, by the way, I might have details that you want to show to the user. So we'll come back over here, load it, reload. Oh, look at that. Oh. Nice. It even picks up the images and all that, and this is all just marked down. Yeah, it's just marked down. All right. Nice. So I saw some of the other extensions had a bunch of like subcommands, right? I can hit enter to just launch something, but then there's also a bunch of subcommands that we could. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So let's let's actually add another top level command, right? Like let's go in here. Right now we just have this one thing that the users can do at the top. Right, My right. demo, like, right. let's add another thing that the users can do. Um, we don't want to have too many things in there, you know, we don't want to overwhelm the users, but let's say I wanted to add, mm, let's say I wanted to open up this repo, right? Just add a shortcut to it. I can add, oh, where is this? All right, oh, I need to put that here, don't I? Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Yep. All right. So this is a, uh, oops. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, whatever. Uh, this isn't just another command for opening up a file, right, in the shell. We'll give it a little folder icon because you can just use emoji as an icon too, why not? We'll reload this. Boop, boop, ba -doo. There we are. There we are. There's our... So you can really decide if you want to have nested commands, basically, right? That requires you to navigate one level deeper or really show it up at the most top level. That's right. You're really in charge of the whole context of right. your app, right? right? If you right. want to put a whole bunch of items in there, you probably want to nest them so that the users go in there and then they know the context of what they're looking for. But right. if you have a bunch of different things, you know, if you want to look for issues or pull requests or repos, you, those are each kind of their own separate page. Right, 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 right. right. So those subcommands, we can still add those, Let's right? Let's do that. Let's add more things, right? I don't always just want to open it up in Explorer. I, uh -huh. you know, probably want to open up this solution in Visual Studio or I want right. to 
open it up in the terminals. So we'll go in here and we'll just add some more of those here. And the way I'm gonna do that is by adding more commands. Oh, so you can just nest them? Yeah. That's... So your commands can have more commands, Man. more things that you can do with each of your things. It's like a command section at some point, I guess, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a small command yeah, palette yeah, inside yeah. of a bigger command palette. And this will ensure that once we select this, those subcommands will just show up in that menu. That's right. So if we go down here, now I can press Control K and I can see all of these things that the user can do right there in that little little menu. Oh, does it even work or not? Does it work? Oh, it does work. Does it work? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. I just want to double check. That's uh... Okay. Come on. Cool. So now that we've built our extension, how can we distribute it? Like, how can I make sure that my users, you know, know how to find it and install it? How does that work? That's a good question. You know, usually when you build things, you want to build them for other people to have them too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you can take your extensions, you bundle them up as an MSIX package, you know, just like any other app. All right. And then you can upload them to Winget. And if you upload them to Winget, we can actually find them right away in the command palette itself. And here we have a big list of extensions for the command palette that... There we go. There we go, right? This is all stuff that the community has built already. Mm -hmm. Or you can just upload it to the store, you know, and then, you know, users can find it right here in the store too. Right. And what's actually nice this week, we're announcing that the for individual developers, the, the onboarding fee in the Microsoft Store is going away. So creating a, an account on the Microsoft Store to submit your apps or publishing Command Power extensions is now totally free. Um, so that's pretty nice too, that you can now just, uh, just do all that as well. Cool. Well, so how can I get started? Um, we have some documentation, I believe, right? That folks can I check out. I think we have some documentation. That's always fun. So if you go to uh, aka.ms ms slash uh, command pal, you can go check out the uh, documentation. Uh, I think we have a we have a we have a link of that, right? Uh, yeah. If I uh, just oh, you're using command pal to oh yeah, I just like wow. bookmarked the docs so I can just pull up the docs and then I'm, there we go. They opened up on the other monitor, so I'm just gonna bring them over here. Ooh. Yeah. So you can uh, you should definitely check out. It has a bunch of samples on how to. Um, create some of these uh, extensions, uh, and it does everything to, to basically get you started. Uh, and then the last thing that we should highlight is on Wednesday, uh, there's the breakout session uh, done by um, Craig and Kayla and Larry, some of the folks here. Uh, and that will be all about all of the new developer experiences that we're launching uh, this week at Build. Uh, so there will be a ton of uh, cool stuff there to check out. And with that, I think we have two minutes left, so we actually did it. So that's yeah, so you can build an extension in like 13 minutes, not yeah. 15. So. Yeah, including documentation, so yeah. that's good. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you all for attending, and uh, have a great rest of the build.